Welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast, where we talk to C-level leaders from across the payments landscape. We'll be discussing the products and services that impact the payment space today, as well as trends and predictions for the future of payments. We will also hear stories from our guests about their journeys to the top. The exciting thing is that the women are very open and IDEX products, so coming with a biometric card, actually lowers that barrier. Women do not have to remember their PIN and they feel that it's very secure. They have been reticent to use contactless, something that we in the Western world, in America or Europe, there's over 80% of people using contactless and tap to the POS every day. In Bangladesh, the women, if you think of their disposable income, a contactless transaction can represent as much as 10%. So they're very reticent. So this tool coming in and helping them and combining it that they can see their transaction in their mobile phone, that they can see what am I spending, it has an educational and a peace of mind factor. That was Katarina Eckloff, the Chief Commercial Officer of IDEX Biometrics, and she is my special guest on this episode, episode 261 of the Leaders in Payments podcast, and I'm your host, Greg Myers. This is the third episode in our series on financial inclusion. Every year, we dedicate four or more episodes to highlight what leading companies in our industry are doing to help serve the underserved, unbanked, and underbanked. Katarina and I had a very interesting conversation about how biometric authentication can help the financially excluded, which could be those suffering from dementia, having literacy challenges, or impaired vision. We also discuss other use cases for the technology, as well as countries that are getting it right, meaning making a significant impact. We've got a great episode ahead, so let's get started. Hi, Katarina. Thank you for being here and welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast, especially this special episode during the Financial Inclusion Month. Hi, Greg. Thank you very much. It's really great to be there. So let's dive in. If you don't mind, tell our audience a little bit about yourself, maybe a little personal and professional background, as well as your role there at IDEX Biometrics. I am a payment nerd, I would say. So I have more than two decades worth of working with tech companies and payments in different formats. My background is, of course, business, but having worked at MasterCard, taking digital payment solutions and new digital service across the world in both, I would say, financial inclusion countries all the way up to the most contemporary or today's world. So I was part of the MasterCard team bringing out contactless across the world, starting with France and then leading it all the way out to African markets. And today I lead IDEX Biometrics, which is a global technology company, and I serve as the chief commercial. So I drive and work with my team on developing the value proposition for our customers, being the banks and the end consumer. And we also drive out the market expansion across countries. So IDEX is operating globally today. So we are live in, in, in more than 10 countries. Let's dive deeper into IDEX Biometrics. So tell our audience exactly what the company does. IDEX Biometrics is the global technology leader in fingerprint biometrics. So we offer authentication solutions across payments, access control, and cyber digital identity and and authentication. So our card-based solution is really on-card authentication. We unlock simplicity. We bring convenience, security, peace of mind, and seamless user experience to the world. Rather than just proving your identity with something you know, which can be a password or something that you have, like your phone, you can here prove your identity securely by something that you are, which is your fingerprint. And you mentioned it's a global company. Where is it headquartered? Inex is headquartered out of both Boston in New York, in America, and Farnborough, just outside London. And we are a company of around 100 engineers extremely specialized into both developing system software, which is based on algorithms and cryptology. And then we have hardware engineers who's working on actually developing the best material to make this sensor and very specific sensor technology for it to be able to be used in high security environments like with military and governments. And also the security encryption, which takes more than two years to develop a really solid algorithm. And what would you say makes IDEX unique in the marketplace? That's a great question. I will say two things. So first of all, IDEX has literally changed the way biometrics work on a form factor like card. So 
Most people are used to biometrics when you pass airport control. So you go through security and you put your thumb on this reader that everyone is used to. That's what's called an image reader. So it takes a photograph of your fingerprint and then it's loaded onto the computer of the untrained governmental entity. That's just an image that's taken. IDEX biometrics is what's called capacitive. It means that we take an imprint of your finger when you put it on the reader and actually convert it into a digital print of your fingerprint. And then we take around 100 data points that we actually extract. So your fingerprint becomes a mathematical formula that is then encrypted and hashed and then stored in the chip on the card. So very, very different technology than what you're used to when you think of biometrics. Yeah, I think people who see that technology think it's very simple, but it's really not. No, it's quite advanced. And it's probably one of the most advanced technologies that exist today because on the card, you basically have the algorithm. When you, Greg, you go out and you shop or you want to access something, every time you put your thumb on the card, the card is learning. So it registers your fingerprint over and over again, and that makes it matching with what's in the chip. And by doing that, you create your own library that's then being stored and hashed and encrypted. It means you can only access your data on the card. So your fingerprint data never leaves the card. It's never stored in the cloud or it's never stored on any bank server or any data server. You just communicate to the recipient, this is Greg, I am Greg. And then the data stays on the card. Okay. We're going to pivot a little bit now and we're going to talk about financial inclusion, which is what this series is all about. And I wanted to start with those that are actually financially excluded from the current payment system. So these could be groups that are suffering from dementia, have literacy challenges or impaired vision. Some estimate this could be up to a third of adults globally. Talking about that technology, so how can this technology in this area of biometric authentication help with the challenges that those groups face? Biometric authentication, it really means that every person can accurately and securely identify themselves by themselves. And like you say, in countries with high rural population and illiteracy, relying on passwords and paperwork is a challenge. And when people are not yet able to read or interpret legal documentations, and in many cases don't even have access to a bank account or governmental service, they are really far out. And if we're talking today, 2022, IDEX is focusing on one of our core markets, which is Bangladesh. And I don't know how familiar you are, but many people think about Bangladesh as the country with famine. And it's interesting because Bangladesh is the country that receives most governmental aids in the world today. I would say almost 7 billion, but it's a dichotomy because on the other hand, it's the country in Asia which has the strongest growth. So it outpaces countries like India, Indonesia, and Philippines. And in Bangladesh, the government is working with something called Smart Bangladesh. And what does that mean? Well, they want to bring on 60 million unbanked people onto the financial system. And in the same time, so these people, like you said, they're financially excluded today. The country has 180 million mobile phones on a population of 160 million. So you have a dichotomy of an underbanked, I would say, a literacy rate of around 30%. And in the same time, they're very digital. So with this, the government is working on digitization to smart Bangladesh. And this is where IDEX comes in. So we're working with three banks today of actually bringing the biometric payment card to these different. And the other part of rural areas, right, we are very used to metro cities where we have good connectivity and access to banks. In many of these countries where you have financial illiteracy and underbank, they live out in the countryside. So it's very unstable networks and even bank branches are hard to get to. So by having your biometric card, which is actually a very straightforward and easy intuitive experience, the work that we're doing with the banks is proving that this is a very relevant product. Do you typically see it, the country itself, the government of the country is really putting together a program or are there ever private entities that try to put together a program for something like this? It's a very relevant question. So in most countries, Greg, it's a combination. So you'll see, and I'll continue a little bit on Bangladesh, but you can see it as a blueprint. In Bangladesh, it's the telco Grameen phone and also the big bank. So you have Brack Bank, you have 
Dutch Bangla Bank, you have Eastern Limited. All of these have some of the world's most sophisticated financial inclusion program and a big system that's world known that's called Bcash, where companies are working. So it's a combination. So these banks and entities get financial support. Brackbank and Grumman, for example, it's actually linked to Norway, so it's quite nice for us. And I would say it's a very tight collaboration because, of course, the government wants these unbanked to come into the system and become included in a way that they can use both private and government services. So the banks come with the solutions and the government underpins with regulations. So we, for example, when we go out and work in these markets, we work with the central banks and we work with the banks and we meet with the officials from the different departments that are focused on digitization. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So let's specifically talk about women, especially in developing countries. Research has shown that women control an estimated $20 trillion in consumer spending, and that continues to grow. Yet 40% of women worldwide lack access to financial services. So how can this technology that we're talking about, such as biometrics, how can it help them? First of all, it's really an interesting phenomenon. And I'll refer to Bangladesh because I think it's a good country. So there, just for everyone to know, of the banked customers, 70% are men and only 30% are women. So you're going to say, how is this possible, right? Well, many times this is an environment with a very traditional patriarchal society. So the women earn their money and they give it to their husbands. So this is something that the banks are working very closely and I would say in a very culturally aware fashion. So they're setting up environments specifically for women. They're organizing women financial educational programs. The exciting thing is that the women are very open and IDEX products, so coming with a biometric card, actually lowers that barrier. They have been reticent to use contactless, something that we in the Western world, in America or Europe, there's over 80% of people using contactless and tap to the POS every day. In Bangladesh, the women, if you think of their disposable income, a contactless transaction can represent as much as 10%. So they're very reticent. So this tool coming in and helping them and combining it that they can see their transaction in their mobile phone, that they can see what am I spending, it has an educational and a peace of mind factor that they really embrace. And it's fantastic to see these women. So right now we're testing. They are very receptive and open to give feedback and enthusiastic. All right. As we continue to talk about the use cases for biometrics, specifically related to the fingerprint biometrics, can you give us some other use cases? When we talk about, I would say, underserved communities, another group that we were talking about digital exclusion, these are people visually impaired and also dementia. You mentioned it in the beginning, right? Because society is going digital. So many of the banks are pressing on to everyone that you should literally only pay with your mobile. It becomes quite hard. Either you need to have a voice recognition or you actually need to have some. If you look at the whole POS environment in retail, it's now going to completely flat acceptance environments, right? So you as a visually impaired, it's very hard because you can't even see. So it sounds maybe a bit simple, but it is quite complex. So EU, for example, Greg, are putting in something called the Payment Enablement Act because they are seeing that the associations for both dementia and blind, and just to give a stat, so there's over 2.2 billion people that are actually visually impaired. So that's a lot. I think we're over 7 billion people, right? So it is not a small issue. Mm -hmm. So here, there have been several tests. We will share more when it's launched, where we're actually testing both the biometric activation and also the biometric usage. And there again, it removes stress and reassuring that they actually can do the transaction without having to actually put their fingers on the POS. The other thing with these two groups, right? So they are quite exposed to both fraud and theft. The dementia they're used to handing over their card, here it's also a barrier. If someone comes and tries to fraud a person with dementia, we're in dialogue with an association of relatives to patients with dementia. This is one of their greatest concerns. And the persons are out, they can be frauded because they can still talk. Hopefully they cannot remember their PIN, but at least you can do contact transactions. So when you put your fingerprint on the card, this cannot be given to anyone else. The only one that can use the card is the person who registered their fingerprint from the beginning. Your card cannot be copied and your fingerprint cannot be copied because everything is stored and hashed, as I said. So 
it creates a barrier and a seamless and safe experience also for these groups. That makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of factors and a lot of players, and you've mentioned some government entities, banks, companies like IDEX that have to come together to make this happen. Is there an example of a country that you feel like they're getting it right or they're making a significant impact in this area? I would say India is the front runner in the world because India started with biometrics as far back as 2005. And all the banks are sitting with fingerprint databases, but that's where it becomes a problem. So the Indian people are all used to using fingerprints and have embraced it and are using it. But unfortunately, there are today fraud issues because, as I said, it's not a capacitive system. So the Indian government and the Indian banks are very interested in bringing on biometric payment cards. And just to give you a little bit of a notion, there is about one billion payment cards in circulation in India. And again, it's mirroring the narrative that I spoke about in Bangladesh and India is ahead because they have put subsidies and government support to people for over 10 years. They digitized India and you probably remember Modi had the activity against cash. So now the next thing that's coming is really putting on-card authentication with biometrics. And these are big banks that want to do this. This is some of the top banks in India. Then the other We have a great example from Mexico where MasterCard and social benefit, and it's called Eden Red, they call them a payment solution provider. They did regional trials with biometric card for Mexican field workers, and that was a state benefit program. So the field workers, who, as you can imagine, don't have much fingerprints left, would get their benefits on the card and then use them as they shopped. And the fantastic thing was that There was no false rejections. So they held their card and the payment went through. So for the Mexican workers, this was a big step forward. That's fascinating that the technology would still work, even though the fingerprints may not be, I don't know what the right term is, that good? (laughs) Or erased, we can say. So it's all about the depth. Okay. Again, it goes back to my comment earlier. The technology to me is just fascinating that you guys have created and are developing and making better and better. It's just, it's fascinating how it works. We are an R&D company that now are actually taking this to deployment. So all the technologies are out of Cambridge. And what I think is interesting is this is deep learning on the card. So people in general talk about AI. And here it's like you have a mini computer on the card, but it's exactly totally unhackable. Yeah, that's the other challenge with payments, as you well know, is the fraud challenges that we all face. Where do you think this market is going? and? How are you going to continue to help this community of vulnerable people that we're talking about? The good thing is that there is big interest around it, and there are plenty of entities that are actually focusing on biometrics. So you have the World Food Program is in progress of rolling out biometric cards. You also have UNHCR. You have MasterCard working on this across the globe. You have the World Food Program, which is a subunit of the United Nations and the health organization in the United Nations. So big world organizations are bringing this out, I would say, as an integrated part of the raising financial inclusion, but also establishing trust for these very exposed groups of people. We've covered a lot of ground so far, obviously about IDEX Biometrics, a little bit about your background, and then obviously You have a wealth of knowledge of what's going on globally around the underserved, underbanked, unbanked, vulnerable communities that we've been talking about. So is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up the show? Yeah, I think there's one point, and thanks for raising it. So IDEX is also really, we're at our starting point of establishing our ESG agenda, right? To make sure that the solution that we bring out, that it's sustainable, and also that we work in a very conscientious fashion to drive both on sustainability and diversity, both who we are as a business, but also how we operate. We're a young company. We really look to support and grow women. So it's also for us as a company an opportunity to meet these entities that are working with women, supporting women. So it's sort of for us both inspiring and exciting to say that we can really bring our solutions and make a difference. We are a 120-people team, uh, and we're operating across plus 10 locations around the world, and we have more than 12 languages. So we are ourselves a very small global company, but that really looks to make a difference and bring this 
ingenious solution. I really want to say it's engineering magic at work, Greg, and really ensuring that people can benefit and do safe and seamless payments. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. And Katarina, I want to thank you for being on the show today. I know your time is very valuable. So thank you so much for being on the show. Greg, really nice. Thank you for having me and wishing you a nice day. Thank you. And to all you listeners out there, I thank you for your time as well. And until the next story. Thank you for joining us this week on the Leaders in Payments podcast. Make sure you visit our website at leadersinpayments.com, where you can subscribe to the show and where you'll find our show notes. If you enjoyed listening, please share on your social channels as well. 